Hello everyone, my name is Nathan Long. I am a paramedic student at Pierpont Community Technical College and today I want to talk to you about supraventricular tachycardia and the treatment plan along with this rhythm. Um, supraventricular tachycardia includes three underlying rhythms which include atrial flutter, atrial tach, and atrial fib. Uh, stable and unstable ventricular tachycardia each have their own separate plan of treatment but the goal for both of these is to slow down the heart rate and treat the underlying symptoms. Uh, if the patient is stable, it means they're not exhibiting the five signs and symptoms, which are dyspnea, altered level of consciousness, diaphoresis, chest pain, and lower BP, and or signs of shock. Uh, remember, a patient exhibiting only one, they only have to exhibit one of these signs to be considered unstable, so keep that in the back of your mind. First step in managing stable SVT is IVO2 monitor. Um, start a line, treat for hypoxia, and get them on a monitor so you can see what the underlying rhythm is doing. Uh, first, have a patient vagal down, which uh, means try to get them to stimulate that vagus nerve. Um, the vagus nerve is part of the par uh, parasympathetic nervous system, which, by you know, is the body's uh, brake pedal, if you will. Um, they can stimulate the vagus nerve by uh, vagaling down, basically trying to have them pass one out, because as you know, the vagus nerve can be stimulated in the rectum. Uh, you can try carotid massage if you deem it appropriate, but make sure you check for brutes so you don't cause a uh, clot and or stroke. And the uh, first drug you're gonna administer with stable SVT is adenosine. Uh, first dose is 6 milligrams rapid IV push. Rapid because adenosine only has a 15 second half life, so very quick. Followed by 20 cc flush. If, if there is no change after 1 to 2 minutes, then push adenosine again. But the second dose will be 12 milligrams, uh, followed by a cc flush. I mean, same, same rapid, rapid push. If no conversion of the rhythm, uh, then go to a calcium channel blocker, cardiozim. Cardiozim is given first dose 0.25 milligrams a kilogram, and this one's pushed slowly, very slowly, over one minute. Um, so make sure you push that slowly, otherwise you take away the heart's ability to contract at all. Um, and again, if no conversion, then you're going to push cardiozim again after 15 minutes, and this time it'll be 0.35 milligrams a kilogram, once again, slowly. Um, if no conversion then, you can try a beta blocker, um, labetalol, 10 milligrams, try and get that uh, heart rate slowed down. Now if the patient is in unstable SVT, if they're exhibiting one or more signs and symptoms, in which we discussed earlier, then they're considered unstable. And that is immediate cardioversion, so you'd want to start at 100 joules no conversion move to 200 joules if no conversion then 300 joules and then finally to 360 joules um, so that's the uh, joules you'd want to use for unstable SVT and cardioversion remember if they're stable then you do the drugs adenosine cardiozim labetalol unstable immediate cardioversion and when you cardiovert a patient, make sure you hit sync on the monitor. Um, you're going to look for the marks above the R waves. This ensures you don't shock the patient in the absolute refractory zone, which could send them into a systole, which will uh, kill them. So make sure you hit the sync. If not, you just be defibbing. Um, you don't want to defibrillize a patient in supraventricular tachycardia. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this presentation of uh, superventricular tachycardia and the treatments of this rhythm. Uh, I'm Nathan, and have a nice day.